Well, hello there, folks, and welcome to my first in a new series. And, uh, this one I'm going to be calling The Riff Raff, because it is my first community-submitted game as of yet. Uh, it's from uh, Gears on the community, who's in Team White currently. I do believe they are still picking out their, uh, picking out their spawns. So uh, we're just waiting for the two-minute mark to, to uh, go by. And just while we do that, I'm just going to explain that, uh, of course, you can submit replays to me, just like uh, a couple of other casters have done. <coughs> and I will uh, have a look through them and cast them, providing it doesn't clash too much with my work schedule. And uh, you'll find a link to my uh, forum profile somewhere floating around in the middle. It's probably sort of jumping around there somewhere. I'll see if I can put it in. But either way, that's uh, a place where you can contact me, or of course on you know YouTube or Realm Team Speak or whatnot. All of these places, and you can send me your send me your replay links and whatnot. So diving into this game, then 25 minutes of a two versus two on the pack system. I must admit, I was somewhat surprised when uh, I did have a look at the first sort of minute or so of this. Uh, and as I say, a, a two v two on packs, that's you know something something quite strange. It's uh, not quite often seen, and. Uh, more interestingly, you have a 2 versus 1 on the Lava Planet of Pax. This isn't looking good for Team White, off the bat, but we'll have to uh, have to see how they cope with this. So obviously, the uh, the teams, well, the White team rather, is going to want to get uh, some support over to the Lava Planet. I'm not sure quite what they were thinking when they uh, when they first did this, but um, of course he will realise this White player on the moon is going to realise he's alone because he's got a good number of fireflies out. He'll have covered the moon by now and we'll be thinking, hmm, I've got the moon to myself, let's eco up and get lots of factories and then pop up a teleporter and go and assist my mate over here who himself is doing a rather interesting uh, technique pertaining to lots of air fabbers. Why not recommend, recommend this sort of a build really early on, especially on the lava planet when you haven't fully scouted and don't know if you're, don't know if you're um, on your own or whatnot it's a very risky move because if any of the uh, opponents went heavy air or at least just a couple of interceptors they could fly them straight over the base and take out all of these air fabricators and then you'd be down six seven fabricators it's not it's not advised it's definitely a risk reward because they'll be able to expand a bit faster and get up stuff but now of course the fireflies have seen this base the air anti air uh, does go up from the commander there and the uh, turret there just about finishes as well but now you'll see a couple of interceptors probably swoop in from uh, this base over here or at least i would have hoped so because that's a lot of air fabricators right for the picking there dashing back over onto the moon still a bit of expansion not uh, too much in the way of uh, a lot of action being put up so let's, let's fast forward a little bit here a few dogs moving in taking out the AA because of course the AA cannot shoot at the floor and the air fabricators want to be careful because the dogs can shoot at air they're not great at it but they can do uh, but now that they've got that laser point uh, turrets up there, the uh, commander assisting as well, it's going to be up very very quickly and the bumblebee coming out and doing some final bit of assisting there as well. Uh, Grenadiers coming out from uh, from the northern green spawn here now which is even more interesting and the commander's going to be there to deal with this but uh, you don't tend to see Grenadiers, Grenadiers too much in the early game, bumblebee's coming in now as well. But I mean green could so just take all of these fabricators out with just a few interceptors, I'm really surprised they haven't done that, they've got a Oh, they've got an army of, in, of air fabbers of their own now over there. And over on the moon we've got an orbital launcher and a deep space radar going up. So obviously White is going to want to colonise even further and see what's going on. But even more air factories going up, not exactly advised. Looking over at Greenspawn now, he's transitioning to vehicles, always a good move. He's even got a couple of uh, combat fabs in there as well, so he's going to be able to heal his forces. Except they are sort of bots, so the, the extent to which... It's actually going to keep the units alive is questionable, plus there are a few bumblebees still lying around and that'll make prime sniping target there. A single interceptor is not really going to be doing too much as in as far as, uh, as defence is concerned of that little push there. The commander here idle again, he wants to be doing other stuff, they're going to have a couple of pelters there for defence interestingly. Uh, so that's going to work against uh, against these bots here. If we look there, we have got the radar coverage, so this pelt is going to be doing perfect defense, but that's a lot of bumblebees. That could have been better put to a commander snipe there. Well, perhaps not an entire snipe, but certainly weakened him sufficiently. 
And taking out a large clump of those units as well, plus the combat fab, really good uh, bombing attempt there. And of course, all of these air fab is now just charging down into that factory. Surprising that all of these air fabers aren't stalling their eco yet. It's probably um, thanks to the chap over here on the moon who's just got so much eco, it's ridiculous, allowing this guy on the lava planet to uh, to get as many factories as he really wants to. Um, because they're, of course, they're still blue numbers there, so they're, they're floating resources, whereas green, surprisingly, is actually stalling on power, so they do need to get some of that up of their own. It's probably because they've got too many factories uh, doing all sorts of things here, haven't got any bots coming out of those. And uh, over on this end here, we're actually going up to T2 Air, but I think mean, that's probably what was uh, killing the energy there, and the orbital as well. Zooming so out into the orbital, let's see where people are going. We've got uh, green heading off to the metal planet, and white heading off to... Uh, has he gone over to the metal planet himself? It's possible. Nope, he has not. So, uh, well, what we'll do is we'll just do this. Uh, uh, so we'll keep an eye on the uh, the orbital grounds and see what's going on, as well as uh, keeping an eye on what's going on around. So a lot of bumblebees now on this white player's base, and a quite number of uh, infernos as well, but Interceptor's just coming in and taking out so many bumblebees there, just a good number. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, we've got uh, pelters of their own going up. There's something I hear shooting over here. Ah, gunships. Good raiding. And, of course, white doesn't have all that many interceptors, though. They do have a couple, so if they were paying attention, they would have taken that out almost instantly. And that's another bomber's there, definitely, for a commander snipe. Instead, they're going to take them over all the spinners there. Not taking out all of the spinners and losing quite a bit of the space uh, defense here, taking down about four or five mechs. Plus the uh, the defences there, but the Inferno's company sweep in and make short work of that. Meanwhile, of course, the uh, the Bumblebee horde was massively reduced there because of all of the anti-air in that uh, unit composition, <coughs> and we've got lots of AA turrets over there as well. So losing a few more units there. But, uh, continued uh, continued assault coming in from green. Meanwhile, of course, you've got the uh, gunships getting up over there. I think it's only about 20 gunships you need in order to snipe a commander outright. Of course, there is the other bits of anti-air around the place, so they are probably going to need probably closer to about 40 or 50. <coughs> I do believe. Bumblebee's still trying to come in, doing a little bit of damage to that uh, AA type there over time, and the radar from Team White is going to help them sufficiently, because they can see exactly what Team Green is doing. Really good moves there from Team White. Meanwhile, Team Green still... Uh, just bumping up on the T2A, and I did see over there for a second. I think I'll probably just pop this back into uh, regular time now. <coughs> I saw back over on Pax Gas here, Team White with the Eco. All of the Eco from Team White. Look at that. That's an insane amount. That's what you call an area command. All of those jigs there are going to really help out, but they've only got about one or two fabbers building them in uh, various different places. In fact, note they've only got the single fabber building it. Not exactly advised, but uh, of course it will get up over time, and they do pay off because they give in about 36 metal and 9,000 power energy, which is phenomenal. Though they do have to take time to uh, pay themselves back. Still, no one's moved over onto Pax Prime, and over on Pax Laser, Green has set up a teleporter here as well. So uh, we'll shortly see. I suspect some units probably moving in there. Back over uh, on the moon, let's have a quick look at what's going on. Still more eco, and now units through the teleporter. This is a really good move for White, and something I suspect uh, they've been waiting to do for so, so long now, and that's a large number of factories. Could probably even move up to T2 vehicles if they really wanted to on the moon now, because they're you know completely, completely free to do that on the moon currently. Back over onto the lava planet, however. Obviously, that teleporter is really helping, because we've got this little uh, incursion force going around the uh, southern, southern flank of green here, and going to take out a fair amount of this eco if they get close, and probably a few of those factories as well. They do have a bit of anti-air in there as well, and Green only have a, a short, a small number of bombers. But this is the attack here from uh, from Green that's really going to be the issue. Of course, lots of bumblebees there, desperately trying to do whatever they can, but there's just too much anti-air there, just losing all of those. The Inferno's trying to come in as well, and uh, another bank of units coming in from the north. Lots of spinners left for not many ground attacking units, so they want to move all of these air fabbers away before they come in range of the spinners. A large number actually in range and starting to lose to those spinners. Not exactly advised there. Meanwhile, in the middle of the green base here, we've got Infernos encroaching on the commander. Keep an eye on your Infernos. They could have moved in and killed that commander by now. Unfortunately, they uh, they will be used on a factory there. That was a shame. That was a missed opportunity for a commander snipe. So they lost 
They uh, they gained three factory kills there and a few mechs kills, but uh, you know they could have got a commander sniper from orders from that. Green now got a fabricator on the metal planet as well. And back over to the uh, the moon really quickly there. We see uh, wow. So all of these factories could be being put to use as well, so uh, you know, and all of these units could be streaming through that teleporter. But it's really interesting that they're not. Meanwhile, over on the other side, we still haven't seen much in the way of capitalising on the T2. You could get out a T2 Faber and get a lot of T2 Eco, and then you can just overwhelm with numbers. But this green player here really doesn't seem to be working with his teammate all that well. They just seem to be sort of trying to sandwich this uh, play white player here in the middle, rather than communicating. You know, look. Let's get a lot of eco and a lot of factories and just absolutely swamp. And of course, let's have a look at their uh, scouting. They have seen the teleporter, but they're not making a beeline for it. That should be a prime target. If you do manage to scout an enemy teleporter, you should take it down, especially if you're in a multi-planet system like this, because look at that. All of those units are just flooded through from Team White, and uh, the green commanders have not left planet yet to go to the metal, uh, metal world over on the other side of the system, which is another interesting move. So uh, this looks like it might be curtains for this green base up here as a commander legs it in the other direction. That orbital radar being invaluable this game actually from Team White. Really great placement for the majority of the game there. And more infernos moving up. They're going to be able to tank the hits from the uh, from the sheller there, from the sheller sorry the pelter and also the uh, the, the uh, tier two laser turret there. She's getting a few hits off and wow the bumblebees. Are they going for the Commander Snipe? They are going for the Commander Snipe. Will they get the Snipe off? It's down to uh, below 40 now, below 20. Just as another single pass, and it looks as though he is going to go down there. Really good Bomber Snipe there. And now, of course, all of these units can just conglomerate in the other green base, of course. And this guy now is left with not very many factories, and Astraeus, and uh, not very much economy, rather, at all. Because right? look in the top left, they have stalled so, so very hard. Not exactly ideal for them, that's that's for certain. It's this white player on the moon, I think, has the, the player of the match here, really. Although, to be honest, their teamwork has been phenomenal, because this white player on the uh, lava planet has been holding out for long enough, allowed to get a, t a teleporter up for his teammate to send through units, at which point they just started overwhelming. But, uh, you know, Team Green made the mistake of always attacking the same spot over and over and over again, and not using their intel to their advantage. They got all the intel saying, you know, look, we can see a teleporter, we can see you're going air, we can see that you've got a lot of air fabbers, but we're not going to do anything about it. You can't just, you know, let someone sit in the slow pot, because uh, eventually the meal will be ready, and uh, you'll be served up. Gosh, that was a really dodgy analogy there. So that's what you're going to get in the Riff Raff games. Uh, and another good thing that Team White did as well, this. This gas joint is here for the taking. And uh, they did certainly manage to get a fair number of jigs up there as well. I mean, look at the economy. 543 and 102k. So merely 127 and 24. That's uh, not good at all for green. And I'm really surprised that uh, white haven't actually made a more concerted effort to take out this other green player whose commander is now off-world. He's, uh, he's hopped it away through the teleporter, so I'll... Uh, well, I'll need to increase the sensitivity of my zoom. That's not great. So uh, having a look over on the metal planet down there in the picture in picture, we can see this commander here trying to get up T2 bots. Not ideal. Look at your economy, sir. You don't want to be doing that. You want to be expanding to the economy on this metal planet. It's rich with, uh, rich with resources. I mean, seriously. Uh, however, this is why their economy is hurting so bad, because Team White is gradually taking it down, although they, you know, it looks as though they just sort of left their units there rather than actually moving them in on... Uh, on that economy field there, which is probably a better idea to do so. And what is that Astraeus doing sat there? Was that queued up before the commander got blown up and was sort of left on its own? Not exactly ideal, but uh, hey ho, it's a long lost Astraeus. And now the units are being told to move in and take out the power gens. Really good moves there from. Uh, from Team White as well. So now this player on the metal planet is basically starting from uh, from a blank slate apart from his original base here, which is feeding him a little bit of units. Not units, sorry, resources. But uh, they're constantly using this T2 air is probably going to be killing your power. Don't constantly get gunships, especially if it's not working. And it's really not going to work against this base now because there's so much anti-air around it. I mean, this commander could even move over onto the moon if he wanted, or in fact, the other commander could move off the moon and then send the moon careering into the metal planet. You know, the possibilities are endless at this point in the game because you just have superior everything. I'm going to put up the uh, speed to uh, to times two again there because, you know, 
it's a bit of a lull in the action. We're just waiting for the white team to really make a concerted effort. In fact, I could probably uh, put it up again on the uh, even more speed there as I zoom out. In fact, I did just see a, uh, a white fabricator there in the orbital layer. Got the teleporter really nice there. In fact, what? Yes, let's send all of our T2 units over spinners. That's that's a good idea. <laughs> Not really, I'm afraid. And uh, back over here on the moon, still those units just sweeping through that teleporter. And let's follow their their path as they move in. We can uh, probably just do this from this sort of an angle now. And, uh, do it from just regular speed because this commander over here is. Well, his teleporter's not working. He hasn't either got it linked or he hasn't got the power. And in fact, he hasn't got the power. Looking at the top left again, looking at the army tab there, you can just see the juxtaposition. Nine factories to 29, 533 units to 8. That's abysmal. This is, you know. <laughs> and of course, now the Inferno's on the horizon. Having a look from the uh, from the green commander's point of view here, first person commander. As we get inside, you can see that he, you know he's, he's trying to focus on on getting this air factory up. And oh dear, there's a few infernos over there. Whatever am I to do? Zooming back out again, we can see that they're just going to tear through this commander, and uh, continuing to zoom out and around this base. As the Infernos just encroach ever closer on that commander, you do have the little bit of defense there from the anchors. It's not going to be anywhere near enough as the Infernos just get closer and closer, starting to sap away at the commander's health now. And they're going to take down the teleporter on their way past, so he has got nowhere to go. That is the end of this game. Congratulations, Team White. Unfortunately, Team Green did not play as a team, whereas Team White evidently did. That is the uh, thing with team games, especially in shared armies, you have to work as a team. You cannot just expect to play it like a normal 1v1 because eventually you're going to stall your ally as well, at which point your entire team gets put in the dumpster. Thank you for watching uh, this in the first of my community submissions, folks. Uh, do let me know what you think about it in the, in the comments below. I'm always looking for feedback. <coughs> of course, let me know what, what you want to see more of. Uh, no. Don't forget that you can contact me at the link I, I showed at the uh, beginning of the episode. I'll probably pop it up again here really quickly, just sort of floating around somewhere in the middle again. Yet again. And uh, don't forget, more PA is on the way very soon, but uh, I have got my uh, projects to be dealing with. So uh, it may not be necessarily uh, immediate, or indeed thick and fast, but they are coming. Anyway, thanks again for watching, folks, and as always... Uh, have a nice day. Sending in the interceptors just to get a scout to see if the commander is on his own. He is on his own. The interceptor is now going to try and move, but of course, Forrest, if he's really good with these aircraft, will move those interceptors away from the commander. But still, don't think that the bear has found that. It's found that indeed there. The interceptors goading them away. The commander is now free to the snipe. Here come the bumblebees now. This is going to be a pretty deciding factor here. This is an all or nothing strategy. Let's watch what happens from, from afar as we zoom down. As these bumblebees approach the commander, will they find him in time? Will the interceptors get back in time? No, they will not. Looks as though one pass is going to go off on that commander, leaving him incredibly low health there as he drops below 50, 40. A second pass goes off, and that commander is sniped successfully. GG's are called from battle there.